Welcome to Disney Coast to Coast, a show celebrating and questioning one of the most beloved entertainment companies in the world through honest, passionate, and clear-eyed Disney discussions. I'm Jeff DePauly, your entertainment-obsessed host with rose-colored glasses removed. Today in the show, we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Main Street Electrical Parade. <laughs> Love it or hate it, the Main Street Electrical Parade holds an important place in the history of the Disney parks. Joining me to discuss this iconic parade is none other than artist Sam Carter, who actually has some personal history with this parade as he was once a float driver for it. We'll be discussing the history of the parade, along with our opinions on the latest updates to the parade, and some behind-the-scenes personal stories. Plus, the Main Street Electrical Parade has inspired a bunch of other Disney parades and content. We'll touch on those, as well as an electrical parade produced in a competitor's park that guest co-host Sam worked on. Grab the confetti and celebrate a Disney anniversary! Alrighty, folks, today I have the wonderful, the talented, the spectacular Sam Carter joining me. Hello, welcome back, Sam. Thank you, sir. How's it going? You know, it's pretty good, and I know that this topic today is something that is near and dear to your heart, and I love talking to passionate folks about subject matters they love. Of course, we're talking about the 50th anniversary of the Main Street Electrical Parade, which premiered on June 17th, 1972, which means next week is the 50th. And you have stories to tell, I'm sure, but I want to start with, do you remember the first time that you saw the Main Street Electrical Parade? I was so young the first time I saw Electrical Parade. I do not remember the actual parade, but... I actually have a photo of me on my dad's shoulders from the first time I saw it. So I remember the photo of it more than the actual parade, but it's something that's always been there. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's funny, too, about saying the 50th anniversary, it kind of sounds like it's been going for 50 years. Like, no, this thing disappears every once in a while and comes back and disappears again and then glows away forever and then comes back. (laughs) So it's 50th, but it's 50 years to the date rather than a consecutive Longest running parade ever, right? Yes, but I will say, in fact, I don't typically do this as far as like going through, you know, a list of dates. But as I was researching this, I was actually quite impressed by how many years it actually has played. So I'm going to start there. So bear with me as I go through a bunch of dates and where it's hopped around to. Because the Main Street Electrical Parade uh, was part of summers at Disneyland, beginning, like I said, on June 17th, 1972. And the end date that they have of like the original run, even though there were some gaps in between, was November 25th, 1996. So 72 to 96 is what they really consider the initial run. That's interesting because it did stop during the Bicentennial. Yes. So it stopped in 75 and 76 because of America on Parade for the Bicentennial. But it returned in 77 with a whole new edition. And then uh, they had the – this surprised me a little bit – the 108-foot – Honor America finale unit was added in 1979. I always assumed yeah. that was 1976 for the bicentennial, but that came after. So that honestly, that float kind of makes no sense to me for 79. That's interesting. Maybe they just kind of they got so used to like celebrating America for two or three years for that bicentennial parade, which seemed like a pretty epic parade as far as parades go, right? But I, it seemed like a, a natural finale, you know the. When they opened the electrical parade, it had that weird neon thing, right? Before the patriotic finale to honor America, the finale unit was uh, a bunch of neon characters, like with mirrors behind them. And there's this rotating thing that had, there's really like rare footage of it, but it's like the big bad wolf done in neon art. And then it rotates, but there's mirrors behind it. So it looks like there's a lot of them. It it was a really wacky thing, and it did not look electrical parade, right? It it didn't last long. Maybe that's why. Maybe they tried to give that another shot, and they had to figure out, well, what do we do? Well, let's honor America. All righty. During 1980, there was a special unit reproducing Sleeping Beauty Castle in honor of the park's 25th anniversary. 
And then the parade did not run during the summers of 83 or 84. But then a duplicate version of the Main Street Electrical Parade ran at Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World beginning on June 11th, 1977 and ending, listen to this, ending September 14th, 1991. So they're giving the run at Magic Kingdom from 77 to 91, which is another really long run. It's a good run. You know why it ended in Magic Kingdom? Because it was replaced by Spectro Magic, which we will yes, talk about it later. Was. Yes. Yes. Yes, we'll get to that. Sorry, I just want to get through these dates real quick. There's so many. The Walt Disney World Parade was moved to Disneyland Paris in April 92. And then a version of the parade called the Tokyo Disneyland Electrical Parade ran at Tokyo Disneyland from March 9th, 1985 to June 21st, 1995. And that's the third version of the Electrical Parade. With Disneyland's being first, then Magic Kingdom second, Tokyo had the third version. And this will come in handy later because it gets really confusing. And then it was replaced by Disney's Fantalusion. Now, hang right. with me here for a second. The Disneyland Parade <laughs> floats were completely refurbished for a move of the parade to Walt Disney World Magic Kingdom from May 28th, 99 to April 1st, 2001. So there we go. Another short move. Then on July 4th. Fun fact, I drove the floats onto the truck. To have it be trucked across country for that. That's hilarious. And we're going to get into all your experience <laughs> doing that. That's funny, though. Uh, then on July, if, if that were today, you'd be on a TikTok doing it, right? <laughs> <laughs> the shoot video of you. What's a TikTok? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> then on July 4th, 2001, they made a return to California, this time as Disney's electrical parade at Disney California Adventure. We call that the panic button. That's the panic button parade. That's when no one came to DCA. We need yep. something to get people in the parks, and it worked. Excellent. Then Tokyo Disneyland, uh, the Electrical Parade Dreamlights returned on June 1st, 2001, which I guess they consider to be the, the Main Street Electrical Parade, even though to me, Dreamlights is a whole new level, which we will get into. Well, it's, they're completely different floats. But, and, uh, but very much inspired. Music. But they yeah. call it the same. Yeah. 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 It, still, it still has a blue ferry and a drum and train, which is yeah. probably why they say that. Then the Disneyland Paris Main Street Electrical Parade ended on March 23rd, 2003. A new Tinkerbell float was created to lead the parade at Disney California Adventure, along with other updates beginning on June 12th, 2009. The parade concluded on August 23rd, 2009, to henceforth operate seasonally until April 18th, 2010. Uh, the parade then moved back to Walt Disney World, where it ran at the Magic Kingdom from June 5th, 2010 until October 9th, 2016. So another long run, then returning to Disneyland Park for a limited engagement from January 20th to August. 20th, 2017. The parade ended its run at Walt Disney World on October 9th, 2016, returning to Disneyland for limited engagements between January 20th and August 20th, 2017, and again between August 2nd and September 30th, 2019. And of course, it's back today. So this parade, thank Everyone you for bearing that? with me, everybody listening, and you, Sam. But this parade has some mileage. Yeah, I wish I, I wish we had the odometer for this thing. What's what's really confusing too is at the end of it, at the end of this story, at the, at the end of this timeline, one of the versions of the parade, I think it's the one that went to Disneyland Paris, which was the Magic Kingdom version. Yep. If I'm not mistaken, when in 2005, when Hong Kong Disneyland opened, they sent that version, which is the second version of Electrical Parade, to Hong Kong Disneyland. It never opened. Oh, geez. And even even stranger about it, they don't know what happened to those floats. So that version that was Electrical Parade from Florida just disappeared. We don't know what happened to that. Well, that's fascinating. It's, it's yeah, super weird. Decaying in Nara's Dreamland. <laughs> it's just, oh, Nara's just, Dreamland. I would just, love to see what Electrical Parade they would come up with. <laughs> so the parade has obviously gone through a lot of changes and different iterations through the years. We're not going to hit every single little change, but today well, we're going to we're going to talk about some of those changes and, you know, kind of what inspired it, its history, and of course your experience with it. But we've got to start where it all started, and that is the electrical water pageant, which frankly, you know, everybody's talking about the 50th of the Main Street Electrical Parade, but Electrical water pageant legitimately has had like a, a never ending run for over 50 years right. at this point. Right. And keeps getting updated. It had that really neat surprise enhancement for the Walt Disney World 50th, which I thought was amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, I always joke that that's 
just something that the executives forgot about. So they're like, you know, <laughs> they're like, just don't remind them and, and we won't get cut. But the fact that yeah, they got a budget. something to, under the radar. I could yeah, see that. Yeah. So the fact that they got a budget for, you know, updated for the 50th, I'm like, nah, all right. Somebody knows this is going on and somebody's cool with it. And I'm cool with that. Well, there's not a lot of nostalgia for the Walt Disney World 50th. Right, they really, and that was like strategic, and we could do a whole show about that. <laughs> like, like, did the Disney World 50th work? Did it not? No, but and they know it didn't. Nostalgia work. was like a bad word, right? So, having said that, the nostalgia factor for those that electrical water pageant is huge. Like that was like kind of like with the heart and soul, one of the first things, and something else that turned 50 before electrical parade. Yeah. Now, for a long running parade like this. They, it wasn't smooth sailing at the beginning. That is for certain. They had major, major problems when manufacturing these floats. Uh, you know, construction deadlines, technology, batteries dying, you know, uh, even a, a crash on Main Street during a rehearsal. So things did not go well for the beginning of the Main Street Electrical Parade. Well, that's appropriate for Disneyland. It seems like most of the things at Disneyland don't really work out that great like for the first few days so there you go and now the blue fairy was at the beginning you know these floats were very much like the electrical water pageant where most of them were flats but the blue right. fairy led the parade and she was always like a 3d float and this was one i gotta say i remember seeing it for the first time in magic kingdom as a kid i don't know what age i was but i'm gonna say between like eight and ten and really being blown away by it like i was I dug it. I'd never, like, I didn't go in knowing what I was seeing. It was just like, okay, we're watching a parade. And then it started. I was like, holy crap, what's this? And I have such vivid memories of seeing that blue fairy come down the street. Like, it's right. not me remembering a photograph the way that you do. Like, I remember being there and just being like, holy crap, what is this? I had a chance to talk to Don Dorsey recently. And if you don't know, Don Dorsey is uh, one of the guys that he's kind of like one of the, the fathers of Electrical Parade where he helped work on the music and syncing the audio up and like the parade route audio. So he's, he's done a lot with Electrical Parade. And he said something that was so cool about why people love Electrical Parade after 50 years. It's like when you see it, even like maybe for the first time, whatever age you're at, it almost seems like one of these things like I can do that. Like there are Christmas lights and chicken wire and shapes in some sparkly glitter fabric, you, you kind of see it. You're like, oh, this would be fun to make. I get it, right? It's not it's not the kind of technology that's like, how do they do that? You look at electrical parade, you're like, okay, cool, Christmas lights. Everyone loves Christmas lights. He also said people love it because people love Christmas. There's a good feeling associated with Christmas lights. So it gets to the kind of ride off that kind of vi good vibes of Christmas because a bunch of Christmas lights going down the street in the summertime. So I thought that was kind of cool and definitely a, a good point about the parade, why it's popular. Yeah, now, one of the things, speaking of technology, yes, that is like a very handmade you know, or homemade sort of thing, the Christmas lights. But one of the things that was very much behind the scenes was, you know, the engineers who helped create the parade, they created the first automated parade show control program. And this allowed the 2,000 foot long parade to contain multiple radio-activated trigger zones. Using radio-activated triggers as each float entered a zone, the audience would hear float-specific music through the park's audio system. Now, this is just common ground today, right? Every parade oh, yeah. does it, this. I would say the Main Street Electrical Parade paved the way for all all parades that kind of you know came afterwards. The next one paving the way would be Light Magic. All the infrastructure that's there today is because of Light Magic, and we'll get to that one later for sure. Yes. Now, I do find this interesting. Um, I love the transitional music, but I gotta say, I feel like this is a technology that today is outdated and needs to be updated because I don't think that there are enough zones. I think there should be at least five or six times as many zones as there are now because currently when your music in a zone starts, if you're toward the end of that zone, it's still another five or 10 minutes till the parade gets to you. And I don't, I, I don't I don't think the transition of music is as seamless as it could be in the twenty first century. Great Are you for fifty about years ago. Electrical parade in particular? Every or parade. Other parades? Every parade. Like Christmas would have different units. Yeah, like so if it's really complicated, but I guess if you put it this way, you have your background music that is the audio, which for electrical parade it's a broke hoe down and it kind of loops and loops and loops. But the float itself has like say the Cinderella floats are going by. 
they have a, a unit that kind of overlays on top of it. So it, it sounds, you know, it sounds good together. Like they're obviously synced up. And then when that unit passes you, then um, it goes to the next one. What I'm, what I'm curious about though, is if the background audio ever changes to it that does. for electrical parade. Does it now? Oh, I don't know about for electrical parade, but I know for parades in general, it does. The- for Christmas, it would. And like, that's when you see like a Christmas unit for uh, Christmas fantasy going by and there'll be like the winter wonderland unit, which has, it's a similar song. It's the same, you know, same. So it's the same beat, but it's different yeah. lyrics, and it's like this one's a little bit differently. And sometimes you you hear it overlap and stuff. But yeah, I, I think I, I could be wrong. But in my parade days, I think there's 24 zones. And um, just so you know, like usually like a parade going from gate to gate, like the opening float would be like 24 minutes. Mm-hmm. And you know, you're at the halfway point is at the crossover at the hub that kind of leads from the Walt statue to Tomorrowland at Disneyland's parade route. That's a, that's the 12 minute point. And then it kind of goes down and you, you have your zones in between. And back in the day, they used to have parade leads walk in front of the, the front of the parade and then in front of each unit. And they would like, they would radio audio central, which is second floor of the uh, great moments with Mr. Lincoln building. Hmm. In fact, you could see the window. <laughs> One of the times that we said goodbye to the electrical parade, it actually got a window on main street and it's still there. So it's farewell season, but you know, you know, we know what happened then. <laughs> exactly. I want to talk about something I remember. As I said, I remember seeing it in Magic Kingdom as a kid. But then I remember seeing on one of the free trials of Disney Channel, back when you had to pay for Disney Channel, there was a special, there was a series called Backstage Disney. Yep. And they had a Main Street Electrical Parade special. Now, I sent you the link to this. Had you ever seen this before? Oh, yeah. In fact, I think I, think I might have seen that at around the same time I saw it for the first time. And I was... I was hooked. I knew that I want to be a part of this parade. And I'm not a performer by any means, but like I wanted to be a part of it. And luckily, you know, come 1995, I got to start driving floats in it. But yeah, I saw it and I was hooked. I thought it was so fascinating to see, especially when you see the drive units for like the whirly bugs. Like I, that looks fun. I want to do that. And I got to do that. I was obsessed with the special as a kid. I remember seeing it and recording it on VHS and then you know, at some point it got the tape either got destroyed or taped over. And <laughs> you I watched remember it too many times. No, dude, I remember being devastated by this. And I was like, I will never be able to see this again. God bless people <laughs> who spend their time uploading this stuff to YouTube because Thank God. Oh, yeah. I honestly never thought I would see it again. But I got to tell you, as I rewatched it recently, I literally got emotional watching the Disney Channel special presentation opening. It brought yeah. back such crazy memories that for cool me. That cool old logo with the Mickey Mouse shape and those like horizontal lines. And it, like oh. for that special in particular, it's very kind of glassy and very yes. 80s. <laughs> so awesome. Seriously, it gave me crazy feels seeing that. But uh, yeah, it's that's a really a good throwback. It's a really great special. I will, of course, include the link in the show notes uh, in the episode description here. But on it, we have, you know, interviews with Robert F. Janney, the parade creator, Ron Mitziker, the producer, Don Dorsey, the musical director, who you mentioned earlier, and a lot of great talents making this. Uh, there were just a few little things I wanted to point out. It was a time at Disney where I feel like, I feel like these days, it's interesting because they get a little bit more strict, but also they start to pull back the curtain a bit more these days at the same time. But one of the performers said something that kind of caught me off guard. She said, I play the blue fairy from Pinocchio. And I was like, mm. oh my gosh, you're admitting to playing a character in a parade. You're not a friend of. They never it, do that. You know, Maybe because she's like half float. They made the exception. <laughs> I don't know, but I was very she surprised by 15 it. 15 foot long legs. I don't know. It was just shocking to me that she made that comment and also the costume designer said we searched everywhere for just the right things because we knew we'd have the electrical parade for a very long time well sir <laughs> yeah, i'll say 50 years later well this is what's super cool about the um that watching that special because you know i watched it recently and i haven't seen it for like probably decades and um yeah it was a total throwback i remembered so many of the, the scenes from it but what i did not recall was besides don dorsey being in it as a musical director the that little teenage float driver they have going on that's my friend chuck from when i drove parade floats and he still works at the park so that's him as he must be like 16 and he's he's inside one of the floats and they're interviewing him about driving floats in the parade so i thought that was fascinating that okay i actually know that guy that's cool and then um in the background when they show the dancers kind of rehearsing they show the choreographer robert ponce 
who, if, if you're familiar with all the parades at Disneyland, he was the, the show director for Lion King. And he actually sadly passed away soon after Lion King Parade. And anytime you see him, you're like, you get really sad and emotional because that's one that's a really sad time in the, the history of the parade department is when we lost Robert Ponzi because he's he's responsible for a lot of what um, went down the parade route. And another person there, too, is um, Vin Riley, who um, when I worked in, as a art specialist in TDA, she was one of the producers. And I think she's still there, too. So it's really cool to see a young Vin Riley there too, doing her thing. And she's still there too. So I love that they got to interview and capture that moment in time because these people, like they, they're still there. It's awesome. I'm blanking on her name, but part of this special also was the director of Fantasmic long before Fantasmic, Barnett Ritchie. Barnett Ritchie. Yeah, yeah there we she's go. actually, she was made a Disney legend recently. Yes, she was. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of people that obviously were part of a historic parade, but also stayed with the company for a very, very, very long time. And, oh, they mentioned a small world unit in the yes. parade, which I didn't realize was part of the parade, because I know that, you know, the new parade, which or the current parade, which we'll get to soon, has this new small world inspired float. That's but right. I didn't realize that was part of the parade's history. Definitely. I They got rid of it, I'd say, in the late 80s. I'm not sure why, but I think it was right after Peach Dragon and before the to honor America unit. They had a small world unit that had two floats and some push units. And the push units actually had small world dolls on it. And the parade performers that pushed those units were wearing the cast member costumes who operate the retraction. So it, it and the music was kind of cool too. It's broke Ho down and it's a small world, right? So it sounds cool. And it, if you happen to buy the record in the eighties or even like maybe the CD in the early nineties, it still had the, it's a small world music on too. And I thought that was the coolest part about the 50th, you know, paying tribute to that is bringing back that they they actually did have a small world unit. Now we're doing that again. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Now you said you started driving a float in the parade in 1995 and it wrapped up in 96. So did you get like a full year? Was it six months? Yeah. You know, I got hired March 95 and I think I started probably getting some shifts in um, early May, but I actually started with the electrical parade. And then I started picking up, Lion King shifts, which was awesome. I worked with two Lion King parades in a day as a float driver, and then I would stay to do electrical parade and having a time of my life. It was awesome. Like I was going to Cal State Fullerton at the time, and I did not need, I didn't need a fraternity. Like the float drivers were my fraternity. It was a super tight group, just super fun, crazy parties. Like it was wild, and it was the best time ever. So 1995. Fantasmic was still like the big new thing out there, right? Fantasmic was the best thing ever. And it was only three years old at the time when I first got hired because that opened in 92. And I remember doing parades in 1995 and no one cared about electrical parade. It was, it was almost like Fantasmic was created to replace the electrical parade, but they, they were kind of just hanging on to electrical parade while they can. And then I think there was a parade somewhere else that had like a, a going away kind of thing. And they said, hey, let's try that with electrical parade. Maybe that'll kind of be our big thing. And they promoted it as, oh, fine, electrical parade's going away. And all of a sudden, 95 compared to 1996, I feel like there's 80,000 people in the park and they're all on the parade route. It was insane. Mm-hmm. And especially after like the, the summer before, it was just crickets, right? Interesting. So... I mean, a parade float driver, I assume you just need a normal license to drive. You know what? Yes, except for light magic. I think we had to get our, our passenger endorsed license to drive the light magic floats because I think there were 16 pixies and eight characters on each float and they oh, were wow. massive. I think they were maybe 70 feet long each and there's four of those floats. So like they're 11 feet wide and you're going down the parade route in the dark. It's You need to get a special license for that. But I don't think you need a special license for the other ones because it's just you just hop in and turn on your, your light switches and stay in the middle. So were you always driving like the same float or what? what's your history? With no, that? you would get cast kind of like a performer. You would get cast as like maybe five day this or, you know, two day this, three day that. Um, sometimes you might be like, uh, hired as a standby for the summer or whatever season you're working where you get to like learn all the floats and like things are a lot different now. You have to be signed off and trained for everything. But back in the day, it was kind of like, all right, you're a standby. Have you been in each float? Have you driven it backstage? Then you could drive it on stage. But that first summer, I, I was really kind of like when you first start, you have to do backstage stuff like traffic 
or ladders. It's like things that are just operational to kind of get the parade up and running and out the out the gate and back. But once you kind of put in your time, then you get the dry floats and you, you kind of like beg and plead with the, the parade lead like, hey, I really want to drive Elliot or I really want to drive pirate ship or um the the most fun i really wanted to do was uh the whirly bugs right i drove orange snell a lot and i still remember the first time i drove orange snell like when i came in the gate my face hurt because i was smiling so much like it was wow probably one of the most fun things i've ever done in my entire life and you never get tired of that like that and that drive the old driving incident that they had it was like this it's the ones that they show in that special right it's a stick and like it, you could just kind of like turn it a little bit and just does a circle right in the spot. The new ones they have now are more like a tank where you have two sticks and you kind of move one forward and one left. So it's not as cool. I, I blame Florida for that because when one of the times that the floats went to Florida, they they fixed them, right? We'll talk about that too later, I hope. They fixed a lot of our floats and not in a good way. Well, let's actually get into that if, if you want. Yeah, well, let's talk about how they fixed – is it Blue Fairy? I think one of the times when they were they were done with the parade – and I think they were welding on it, and I think it caught fire. <laughs> I think that's why we don't have Blue Fairy now. Oh, really? Yeah, I think I think in between when it ended at Disney World and it was getting ready to come back, I think it was getting worked on, and I think it caught fire. That's not good. Wow. No, but I, that, I, I'm, I might be confusing myself with that, too, um, because I know there was a time when Electrical Parade was at California Adventure. And the story that I heard was there was a, an executive watching the parade, and this executive's kid said, who's that big blue lady? And then that was the, the key moment where it was like, that's it. She's out of here. My kid doesn't know who the blue fairy is. Hey, what, can, what else can we use to promote this? And it was Tinkerbell at the time was coming out with all those fairy director video movies. And so they said, well, let's promote, let's replace blue fairy, because no one knows who she is, with... Tinkerbell. And I think that's when the summer came and, and they had the Tinkerbell float lead the way. And it was super confusing because they had her in a hot air balloon. And I'm like, well, first of all, Tinkerbell could fly. Why does she need a hot air balloon? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. But, oh, there's a there's a hot air balloon in the direct video movies. Oh, that makes sense. The kids will love it. But the bummer part is I'm like, why didn't they just put Blue Fairy back in the Pinocchio unit? Like you still have a Pinocchio unit you could use it for. But I, I think what I learned later was it just didn't survive a trip to Florida. Interesting. I do remember that 2010 DCA, 2009, I think, right? DCA. Yeah, that sounds uh, right. I like how they kind of connected pixie dust through all the floats. They tried to yeah, that was put, neat. A, put a thread through the entire parade route where Tinkerbell was at they the They got top. rid of that. It's not there yes. anymore if you haven't noticed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I yeah, it was interesting. It. They had – because – Here's the thing with that float. They tried to make it look like it was a Tokyo Dreamlights float. Mm -hmm. But Electrical Parade is Christmas lights and reflectors and chicken wire. Mm -hmm. Now you bring some hardcore, like, bright LED lights and these bright strobes and this whole new look to it. It just doesn't look right. And that's one of the things that when we came out with Paint the Night, I wanted a, a replacement for Electrical Parade ever since Light Magic went away. And I, I never really considered Light Magic the replacement of Electrical Parade. It's almost like a, a palate cleanser. It's like, we're not going to hype up 1996 as, come see that parade you've loved all your life and then take it away from you and then just give you the, the same thing but different. I think I see it as like a palate cleanser. Like, it's not a parade. It's a show. It's this and that. And I, I could go on and on about Light Magic. But um, it, then Light Magic goes away after that one summer, <laughs> that one set of three months in 1997. I waited two decades for a replacement of Electrical Parade, and it was Paint the Night, and it was worth it. It was worth the wait. Paint the Night is awesome. Yes, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Let's yes. go back to 1996 and the retirement, quote unquote, of the Main Street Electrical Parade. Now, was the term glowing away, was it introduced then? Because I, yep. I liked the Okay, glowing away was part yeah, of Yeah, that was the first time we heard it. Come okay. see it before it glows away forever. Okay, this is the time when light bulbs were, you know, certified as being part of the show and they were sold off to collectors. I have one. I'm sure you do as well, right? Of course. But I do have to say this about the light bulbs. To this day, people get really upset when they said, I bought this light bulb and then they brought the parade back. Like, it, they're angry about it. I'm like, that was for charity. <laughs> like, Oh, did it go to charity? Mad that you spent 
10 or 15 bucks on a light bulb with a really cool box. And it really is from the parade. And people are like, hey, well, how are you, how am I getting this from the electrical parade? The parade's still going. How do I have this? Well, they, they switch out lights on a normal basis, you know, and I remember like halfway through that last summer when they were trading out light bulbs, they were putting them in a box to collect to go to that. So they're legit. They're really from the parade. But people were upset that they got it before it was over. They made him think like they made him, it made it sound like that really wasn't from the parade. It was. They switch them out normally. It was, it was from the final year too. But it wasn't the final year. I mean, I get it why people are like it's <laughs> a lie. Right. It's like when in quotes, uh, final. Yeah, when Bette Midler was doing Hello Dolly on Broadway, and you know it was huge. This was just a few years ago, and everybody bought tickets to the last performance and like they added two weeks onto the show and people are like no i specifically bought tickets to her last performance what are you doing i'm like i get it yeah if you think you're getting the finale and you know and you don't that's that should be like a a special special ticket that's like no this is gonna be a thousand dollars a ticket to see the last 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 one ever but i mean even with um the electrical print on that last year they um First, it was going to be done and I think, like, what, end of summer, and then they extended it to, I think, October, and then it might have gotten extended again till like, I know the Christmas tree was up by the time that the last one did, and I think it might have been the last, last one at a family Christmas party. You know, like, there's there's a lot of last parades. Yeah. Um, but the, the biggest one I remember was I got to do, uh, I was taking photos, they, they allowed me to take, <laughs> with film, cool pictures of the whole last season, and I, I put together a slideshow. And we showed it on the last night in the warehouse, which was the coolest night ever because they had a whole party set up inside the warehouse and the floats kept their lights and music on all the way backstage once it came in from Small World. Usually they just shut them off right away and mm-hmm. the music shuts off. But for that last, last, you know, using quotes, the parade kept a, it kept traveling with music and lights on all the way into the warehouse one at a time. And once all the floats were in the warehouse and the music was still on, then they kind of like they all synced up together, and then they did the real cool final fanfare, mm-hmm. and then it was so cool to see them shut off one at a time, like, choo, 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 choo. and then the warehouse was black. It was awesome. That I have is some really pictures cool. of that too. It was really, it was like one of those moments. It was a total chill, and we really did think it was that was it. We never thought it, it'd be coming back. Yeah, we thought that was it. But that's why it was so cool when we did, you know, when it did go to Florida. It was neat. We were, we were happy to see it back in Florida. We thought it was kind of cool like because when you think something's gone away forever. And I will say this. I don't consider an electrical parade a parade. And yeah, yeah, of course, it's a parade. It's on the parade route. I think of it as a classic Disneyland attraction at this point, right? It keeps coming back because people want to see it. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm a sap. I, I remember when I took my kid to see it for the first time and he was really young and he tripped out when he saw Goofy driving this train going down. Like, And I have video of it. It's great. And then even now, like, like we love to go watch it. So it's, and I have family that work there too. So I know I have family in those, inside those floats as, as the parade goes by and it, you grew up with it, right? So I'm, I'm glad it's back. My goal, if I had, if I could put this into the universe, I think Disneyland should always have electrical parade during the summer. And I think California Adventure should have paint the night. This should always be like a cool then and now type of like nighttime entertainment for, for this resort. I respectfully disagree with you. Here's my ar- my argument about the whole it's an attraction thing. That's fine if you want to look at it that way. But guess what? When an attraction is updated, you don't keep the original around. You ha- Like, we don't have OG Star Tours. We have Star Tours The Adventures Continue because it has been updated. In my mind, Electrical Parade has been updated with Paint the Night. So it's time to say goodnight to Main Street Electrical Parade. I'll just say to each their own. That's okay. Um, it just it seems like it's something that's been around for so long, and maybe that's why it just classifies that. And I, it's I'm always glad to see it. I'm yeah, I, I kind of you you can't help but to roll your eyes when like oh they're bringing it back, especially in the case of California Adventure, because I knew that was not because people loved it. That was because help. What are we going to do? Our park is failing. There's no one in the park. How do we fix that? And Electrical Parade fixed that. You know what I would honestly love to see done with it is I would like to, I mean, I've been saying for years, I want a permanent Walt Disney Archives exhibit somewhere, whether it's downtown yeah. Disney or Disney Springs or whatever. And I feel like some of the iconic floats should just be part of it. I feel like Elliot yeah. should be on Elliot, permanent display train, there. Yeah, Whirly Bug. 
yeah, like they should be permanently displayed somewhere. It is a very important part of Disney history, Disney Parks history. But I'm just, it just feels antiquated going down the street. And I guess let's start talking about, oh, actually, before we start talking about this latest iteration, I do want to mention, I find it funny that this 2009 return of it to Disney California Adventure was part of Summer Nightastic. And the marketing for Summer Nightastic was all about the return of the Main Street Electrical Parade and updates slash return of Fantasmic. Is 2022 yeah. just not 2009 all over again? <laughs> it's like oh, man. crazy. We did this huge flash mob for Summer Nightastic on Main Street where we had this guy pretend to propose to a girl. Did you ever see that? I remember you that. Google it, you'll find it. Yep, yeah, I remember I, it. I got all the props for that thing. That was ins- – yeah, Summer Nightastic. Wow. Well, it's it's funny. Um, People want a night parade, right? And I, th- I think we kind of – we definitely spoiled them with Paint the Night because that came out of nowhere. Here's this brand new parade. Which is there's actually two of those floating around that aren't being used right now. There's one for Hong Kong. I wish they were Anaheim. floating around. They're just in storage. <laughs> Nothing's yeah. floating with those. Yeah, they're collect they're collecting dust. But that's what I'm saying is like they exist, but they're not they're not being used. Paint the night is so cool and it's such a good juxtaposition from Electrical Parade that that's where like it's really de- defined. Like okay, if we're gonna be bringing that back every once in a while, and I still believe someday we will get Paint the Night back again. I feel that when you do have updates to the Main Street Electrical Parade, it should still feel vintagey and antique-like. Those floats are antiques going down the parade route, yeah, right? Yeah, they look like they're going to fall apart. They it's because they are falling apart. Like the trolley tracks. Okay, you it's have a wheel time to, snap to off. retire them. Put them out of their misery. It's like a dying dog. Put it to sleep. Let it rest. I hear you. And what I say to you is, it's the fiftieth anniversary. I think it deserves this year, of all years, to come back. Yeah, yes, we'll be I'd saying the same thing come. at the seventy fifth. Oh, just, it just <laughs> you know, I don't. I I appreciate its history. I think it's lovely. I just think we've gone so far beyond it that now it it feels like a joke. And I got to say, I did recently see it for the fiftieth anniversary. Drum and train looks really good. I love that they put the fifty on that flow. It's pretty cool. Okay, but riddle me this: so the big drum has a big fifty on it now. For the 50th anniversary, but do you not think that was a giant 50 put there for Magic Kingdom? Because I do. Whoa. <laughs> I really do. I never thought about that. I have a feeling that was for Magic Kingdom. I've heard rumors of Paint and I going to Magic Kingdom for I've the 50th, yeah. not Electrical Parade. But, I mean, it is the 50th of Electrical Parade, so who knows? It's, it's possible, though, that it could have been for, the, for Walt Disney World. It totally makes sense. It just, um, I don't know. That was the first thing that went through my mind. I was like, huh, that's a little convenient, isn't it? Well, my thought was it's it's a really cool light programming that changes from Main Street Electrical Parade to Disneyland Presents to 50 years, right? So it, it could have been. But you know what? If you really wanted to talk nostalgia to Walt Disney World, they should have found a way to bring back Spectra Magic. I think that's a very oh. Walt Disney World, very Magic Kingdom. Those floats have all, you know, they're they're trashed. That's another so one, couldn't. though. Uh, well, Spectro Magic should – once Spectro Magic came, that was another time. I was like, okay, we have upped the Main Street Electrical Parade. We're, like, yeah. Main Street Electrical but Parade But with, like, with Spectro, Spectro Magic, Magic, it was just Christmas lights, and they introduced a little bit of fiber optics, right? So it's like baby steps to getting away from just Christmas lights. Now, one of the things – I know I'm I'm talking a lot of crap on Main Street Electrical Parade. I really do appreciate its history. But no, I just want to say like one of the things – I was hanging out with my friend and OG DCTC co-host Patrick Dougal, and he said something that I had never thought about, and I think he hit the nail on the head with this. And that's that the Main Street Electrical Parade doesn't have energy because there are so – few live performers well i shouldn't say there's so few but they're the live performers aren't like energetically dancing and stuff there's some slow waltz stuff and there's characters walking but there's none of like that energy like we get in paint the night and it's one of like the dullest parades I disagree in with that, that sense have you he must patrick must have left when the pinocchio unit came by because those those donkeys are awesome it's a they, very they small the portion they're of the like parade. hey i know you love newsies they're like the newsies of electrical parade. Those guys are awesome <laughs> coming down the street. I'll put it in terms I know you'll love. I I think it's few and far between. It's not like a 
it, it's a it's slow not a performer parade. heavy parade. That's for sure. Because the, they're the the stars are Elliot. They're the floats, right? It's mm-hmm. not and like for the Cinderella unit, it is like kind of very slow champagne arms, and you know it's that slow ball dance going down the way. You, and you and have even the, white the floats rabbit roll around. so slowly. The floats are like the slowest floats I've ever seen in my life. They're the same. They all go slow. I don't. I feel so slow to me. <laughs> it really Maybe. does. Well, you know, did, did you know the music was updated though? I, I think did when hear it that. Came in in two thousand nine. I think when we're talking about that, when the team float came in, mm-hmm. they actually got a version of the music, which I believe was a version of the Dreamlights music from Tokyo. And I think that was kind of sad because they're here. Here they're trying to take Christmas lights and old vintagey stuff. And trying to make it sound modern and kind of new and like, no, don't touch it. It should sound like a record player is playing this. <laughs> it should sound vintagey. They're antiques for a reason. When you try to like play hardcore pop music to electrical parade, it doesn't work because it's that will work fine for Paint the Night. You know, when can we do this again? That's perfect kind of music for something that's really hella bright, kind of, you know, not really fast moving, but that ha- Paint the Night had. Some energy dancers in that one for sure. You know, that's a that's ton. the difference yeah. too. Yeah. When can we do this again should be the slogan for Main Street Electrical Parade at this point. Like, <laughs> come on. You know it's gonna happen. Yeah, well hopefully they'll figure out paint the night and they'll get it back and we'll get to switch it out every once in a while. It's like a Coke and Pepsi thing. Like we're gonna drink Coke this year. <laughs> Let's talk about the new finale float that we got because that was an update that came to the parade for the 50th and this replaced the whole Americana finale. But this float is led by, well, first of all, it throws back to the OG, it's a small world float, which is kind of a nice tribute, but it's led by the Blue Fairy, a small right. world version of So Blue it would be Fairy. really weird to ever bring the Blue Fairy back because she's already back in small world doll form. I mean, I I do love that Blue Fairy float. I think that would be great to bring it back at some point. Have you seen the one in Tokyo? Oh, heck yes. Dude. Dude. It's like Tokyo Parade is next level. And it's it's, when when Dreamlights first opened, it was still kind of like, you know, Christmas lights and LED. But they've since redone the Blue Fairy float. And now her wings are like a big TV screen of like Mm -hmm. cool, beautiful, just light patterns. And like, again, that wouldn't work in Electrical Parade, right? Because it's too high tech. That's, and that's what's cool about this small world finale unit. It's It doesn't look high tech. It's small world dolls and Christmas lights, right? And yes, of course, you could recognize the To Honor America finale. But my one beef I have with the finale unit, because I think it's pretty. I think it matches the parade. It's not trying to be too overly high tech. It's the music. Oh, I like the music. Well, that, that's cool. And I know a lot of people love playing Name That Tune. Because the music is kind of like old school sounding synthesizer. And they're like, I feel like even my kids were excited to hear a song from Princess and the Frog or from Moana or, you know, all these newer movies done in that way. And I think that's kind of cool to kind of tie it all together. But I think people are looking at the float as far as just, oh, it's like the Disney Plus float because it's all these different (laughs) animated features on it, right? Where it's like, no, it's a small world float. I think people don't get that. What are those weird dolls on it? Because like they're just hearing all like the music from the movies. They're not hearing It's a Small World and Broke Hoedown, which I really thought that's what they would do. It's done very similarly to how they handle the characters in It's a Small World. It's small world versions of these characters with their tunes thrown into the main theme. I think the music in the parade for the finale, it overpowers everything. At least in the okay. attraction, it's subtle. And you kind of hear like a, like a chimey version of a dream is a wish your heart makes or something like that. It's mm-hmm. not overpowering. It's a small world. So I think I think it doesn't connect the dots and tell everyone, make, making sure everyone knows, no, this is a small world finale. It's like, yeah, we were doing to honor America. Now we're honoring the whole world, right? It's mm-hmm. an inclusion thing. It's It's not just us. It's not some political rally going down the street. Which well, I'm a little surprised like. that that hasn't gotten more heat, to be honest. I was waiting for it, and it never happened. So, good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad. But, yeah, I, I think it's a really cool float. Um, I really like the finale, the, the castle. It's like a castle version of Small World. Yeah, so here's it's kind of like fact. the Small World facade clock tower and castle form. Yeah, it's done like cool. in a castle form. Yeah. So um, I, I guess this was like the 90s, and if you Google this, take a look at this. There's There was like a... A cruise ship. So this is before Disney Cruise Line. There was going to be like a SS Disney kind of like 
picture an aircraft carrier, but of a floating Disneyland on it, where they would have attractions on a big boat like this. And this boat would kind of like sail around the world and park in different docks, different, hmm. different harbors. And you would be able to like, it's like we're bringing Disneyland to different people. The main icon on this barge, kind of like an oil rig, right? Was this huge castle, but it was made up of, it's a small world, Mary Blair look. Huh. It's very, very similar to what that, that um, finale float looks like. So if you think it's the SS Disney, um, you'll see it. There's a really cool model of it. And it's almost exactly the finale float. Interesting. Now, the characters we have on there, aside from Blue Fairy, are Hercules, Coco, Moana, Pocahontas. We have Frozen characters, Raya and the Last Dragon, Aladdin, Brave, Princess and the Frog, Mulan, Jungle Book, and of course, Encanto. And you get different views yes. depending on which side of the street you're on. So see the parade twice if you want to see it all. And yeah, I think, it, I mean, I think it's a fitting finale. I think it works. And, you know, I felt they had to do something new to the parade, right? More than a 50 on a drum. Yeah, I think it worked out well. You know what's neat too is besides It's a Small World being like a part of the parade's history, it's also the finale currently on Tokyo Dreamlights. They have mm. this massive, ridiculously awesome, it's a small world finale that's like a ton of floats. They're gigantic. It's the brightest thing you've ever seen going down the street. And that music's really pretty. And it would have been cool because it's like a symphonic version of Electrical Parade or Broke Hoedown. And it's a small world. But it's so grandiose. And even the music is, it just wouldn't work because in this case, it's still like a old school vintagey looking float going by and that's what i love about it i love that it looks old school but it's the newer characters on it i, I do like that part of it another thing that you get with this finale float at least on main street usa you do at disneyland i'm not sure about anywhere else in the park but there is projection mapping used yeah. on the main street buildings while this parade float passes just this float so that's Pretty like awesome. a nice little addition as well well, they do it on – it's a small world. Do they? they okay. do, which is really cool to see it go by, and it's going by its own attraction. So I think that's neat. But it also projects on the Matterhorn and the castle. So when you see it going down the parade route, you can see the castle is kind of twinkling like that too. Very cool. Very cool. Awesome. So as you've heard us talking about throughout this episode, Main Street Electrical Parade start – well, technically, Electrical Water Park pageant started it, which led to Main Street Electrical Parade. But that led to a lot of other electrical parades throughout Disney's history – of course, when Electrical Parade closed, we got light magic at Disneyland from May through September of 1997. And I gotta say, I've never seen this in person, but I've seen video. And to me, this show was not given a fair chance because the tech in this thing is impressive. Oh it really is. It's The whole show is kind of a miracle that it was able to come together. And I'll, I'll be the first to say it is not perfect. And that's not even a bold take, but I actually really did love that show and I loved working it. It was so exciting because it just looked expensive, like being on, on the other side and working it and saying goodbye to Electrical Parade and knowing that Light Magic was coming. And we really didn't even know what Light Magic was. And I, to be honest, they didn't know what Light Magic was. It was still evolving. You know, it was supposed to be this um, show, not a parade. They called it a street-tacular because there were show was stops. These, there were like two, yeah, two show stops along a parade route or something, right? Yeah, it's kind of hilarious because there's four floats. They're all identical. They're 80 feet, 80 feet long, 11 feet wide, I think 30 feet tall. They're named Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta. And for there's two show stops for each. One show in Small World Mall and another show in Main Street right on the straightaway. And – uh the small world mall area for that show stop only fit three of the floats. So that fourth float was waiting backstage. And huh. when the, when the show was finished and they start traveling, that fourth float Delta would kind of sneak out like it was there the whole time with a whole new set of pixies and a whole new set of characters. And they're just waving like they're a part of the show the whole time. So that part is hilarious to me. And like, people are like, wait, where did that float come from? You know? So then it goes down and actually they made a backstage area out of onstage. The dog leg area, which, which we call it from uh, the Matterhorn to the, the Alice Mushroom, maybe to like the Wishing Well Bridge right there. We would block that off, get like ton of guest control. And that was where we did like a whole reset for like 10 minutes. One of the things just to give the performers a chance to catch their breath, because I think it was a 22 minute show, river dance, basically, right? It was really intense choreography and they're exhausted so it gives them a chance to catch your breath 
And then they start to show on Main Street. And then it, they take off and all four of those floats fit on the straightaway section of Main Street. And yeah, so they do the show. It's about light. It's about Tinkerbell and her pixie friends. Sound familiar? Ten years later, Tinkerbell Fairies was like the latest rage. So it was ahead of its time as far as that goes. But they introduced these random characters. No one knew what it was. They couldn't really follow along. So they try to tweak light magic and have like a narrator come in and say like, now this is happening. Now this is happening. So it's supposed to be a dreamlike experience of the pixies are visiting all the Disney characters in their dream and they're dancing together. Listen, the problem, I think, was the fact that there weren't enough Disney characters. It was unknown characters. And also Celtic music is it doesn't feel theme park to me. I, I don't want to, you know. Well, you know, Riverdance was pretty popular back then. Yeah. And that was an Eisner thing. From what I understand, it was not Celtic at all when it first started. It was very symphonic and very kind of like, you know, something more appropriate for like fairies. It was a real pretty symphonic type of music. And from what I understand... Michael Eisler went to Riverdance and he's like, hey, this is cool. Why don't you guys make it Riverdance? And they, they had to change it <laughs> pretty far into production. One of my favorite things was these giant projection screens that came up out of the centers of these yeah. floats. And there were projectors all over the park. In fact, they you still see the towers built in the Small World Mall that were put there for this purpose. They it's almost cool. invented projection mapping. If you think about it, right? They're using like on a float projections onto it, right? What's really cool about these floats, I, I mentioned how big they are, but they have to like line up on the parade route within six inches of a certain spot or those projectors don't line up. If it's too far to the left or right, well, the performers aren't going to have room to dance on the parade route and the actual uh, projections could be sh being shown on a tree or like out of focus. So there's magnets in the parade route and like you would kind of have a sensor and you would line up to it and you're you're talking to someone on uh, one of the tech one of the um float driver guides that are saying okay alpha call the ball and you're like you're waiting to see like the lights show up and like you're like all right i see the lights I'm calling the ball it's happening and then you kind of stop on the perfect spot all because these magnets in the parade route and in small world those magnets are still there you can still see them I honestly would love to see an updated version of this, you know, take another stab at it. They would never call it light magic because it has too many negative connotations. Well, they did say it's it. on hiatus, so they wouldn't be I know, liars if I it think came they back. officially retired it, though, eventually. Did they? Okay, well, that's good. I, I think so, yeah. You mentioned possibly bringing it back. I always thought back in the day, if they were to bring it back, I would have loved to have seen it repurposed in the Hunchback venue to make it like an actual show and like a theater in the round space. And you could build like a permanent show that would be like, you know, in the forest right there would have been really cool. The hunchback venue? You mean like where Galaxy's Edge is now? <laughs> yeah, you couldn't do it now. But like okay. back in the day, back in the late 90s, I was thinking it'd be really cool because they stopped doing hunchback and you had a venue right there. I thought that'd been kind of cool. All right. Another one that was inspired by the Main Street Electrical Parade would be Spectro Magic, which we touched upon. Came to Magic Kingdom in 91, ran through 2010. And for me... Amazing the, music. I oh, love that theme. That's, that's what I was going to say. That That's the thing that sells me on that show is, or that parade, is the music is spectacular. Like, way better than the Baroque Down. But I don't <laughs> know. Like, this was a huge leap forward, in my opinion, and I, it kills me that it's dead, that it just deteriorated. That's insane to me that yeah, that was allowed to happen. It's, it's awful. Like, it's it's funny they didn't give it the same like TLC that they did Electrical Parade. Like, they, I felt like they always kind of like packaged and took care of Electrical Parade. But I feel for Spectro, they just let it rot and fall apart, and like it was just too expensive to fix. So they said, "We'll scrap it." It's crazy. Like, if they were able to bring back Spectro Magic for the fiftieth, I think people would have lost their minds. I will often just put on that music in my car and drive. Like, that is... That Jimmy Cricket voice is so good. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? How he introduces it? Yeah, yeah. And the... Ba -da -bum, bum, 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 ba -dum, yeah. bum, bum. It just feels like a humid summer in August. It reminds me of, like, a trip. Because we would do a bunch of cast member trips back in the day. And, like, it just re feels like... That music feels like humidity and mildewy <laughs> air conditioning. Well, that's not that's not a good memory, but I did love <laughs> Spectro Magic, and Me yeah, I, oh god, loved it so much. Disney's Fantalusion came to Tokyo Disney from ninety five to two thousand one. Later went to Paris, and this had some really cool things, including uh, villains it's like transformations. On wheels. Yeah. yeah, the villains like it, there was very much a Fantasmic section where you see Maleficent transform into the dragon, and even I believe Jafar transform into the snake and. 
it's quite unbelievable what they did with this. It was another, you know, plus version of the Main Street Electrical Parade. Definitely. You know what's so cool? I got to I gotta mention, too, with all this music and how good it is, Bruce Healy came up with all this music, too. I know John Debney had something to do with Spectro Magic. Well, maybe, I hopefully, I don't know if he did, I don't know if Bruce Healy did Spectro, but I know Bruce Healy worked on Light Magic, Fantillusion, but like, yeah, all these different parades, there's so many of them. Super talented guy, like, he makes these hooks that are like, so good, and I don't, I don't know how they do it. Like, I, I'm an artist, but I, I don't know how they come up with these awesome, contagious hooks. Yeah. Over at Tokyo Disneyland, we got the Tokyo Disneyland Electrical Parade Dream Lights, which premiered in 2001 and is still going, I believe, right? Yeah. What's what's cool about that, like we mentioned, it's a new take on Electrical Parade. And they keep updating it. But it starts with Blue Fairy and then Drum and Train, like a really big version of Drum and Train. And then it has an Alice unit. And then it kind of starts doing its own. I think that's where like the similarities end. I know the Pete's Dragon Float is unbelievable. The Elliot... Have you seen the genie float? The genie float. The genie is, float. Yep. The genie oh float is great. The blue fairy yeah. is great. The Cheshire cat float, it like un, it unravels in lights. It's really cool. Here's the thing. Earlier you were talking about how uh, Dorsey described Main Street Electrical Parade as something that felt homemade. You could make it at home with chicken wire mm-hmm. and Christmas lights, it's like arts right? and crafts. This feels like the Disney version of the Main Street Electrical Parade, where it's like unreachable. It's expensive oh, sure. leds like floats that look so you know manufactured for lack of a better term they're stunningly gorgeous you know what's so weird now i feel like the technology has gotten so good that these floats are like just sculptures that are tvs yeah like they're shaped things and the leds are they're literally tvs now yeah the it's pirate sails for the, the peter yeah. pan section are Literally LED screens, you know. You can, like watch this football game on it. It's, yeah. it's really crazy. The Beauty and the Beast ballroom float is beautiful, but all of these like super updated floats are set to the music of the Baroque hoedown. So it has that, you know, it is paint, uh, Main Street Electrical Parade for that reason because of that right. score, but it's a very different version. And frankly, if that came to the States, I'd say. <laughs> msep live on man oh well, you know what they it wouldn't work in a in our electrical parade because it'd be like what the hell is this amazing float doing in with this ancient stuff right but no i'm saying get I rid of think- the electrical replace <laughs> our well you, you know, know they keep switching out floats so often over there they can't keep them all because the parade would be like miles long i have no problem collecting their hand-me-downs right and i think all those floats would fit perfectly in paint the night so that's what i'm hoping for yeah, and then speaking of Paint the Night, we got that in Hong Kong in 2014, and then of course Disneyland in 2015 for the big anniversary, the 60th anniversary of yeah. Disneyland, and uh, eventually Disney California Adventure got it as well. I mean, I've said amazing things all the time about Paint the Night. It's incredible. It's spectacular. I, unlike you, I get your reasoning why you like it in DCA, but for some reason it did not feel the same to me being in DCA. You like it better in, um, at Disneyland? I did, but I get your reasoning because your whole thing is the characters, right? Well, I would I would think that Paint the Night is like the perfect kiss goodnight for California Adventure because every single unit in that parade has an attraction or land at California Adventure. Monsters, Inc. has a dark ride. Cars has Cars Land. You know, you have Mac the Truck going down there. It just seems appropriate to have a Cars Land in there. Uh, Little Mermaid has the dark ride. Um, it just, it seems like, it seems more appropriate. Yeah, and Frozen did have the show too. Yeah, I can't believe they got rid of that float. And then with the Incredibles, they had Incredibles float. Well, there's the Incredible Coaster. Every single unit had, um, and there's a Beauty and the Beast float. And I know that is not a real Beauty and the Beast attraction, but my loophole for that theory is, well, we got the animation thing, <laughs> the Beast Library. That'll count for me. <laughs> but it just seems like every float. And then there's something about Mac going down Main Street that just didn't feel right. Oh, but see, I loved it. Yeah. yeah, it seemed like it seemed like it reminded me of. Back to like a late night rehearsal and there's some big ass delivery truck going down the street. That's what it looks like. That Mac looks like that. But in California Adventure with Cars Land and the mountains in the back, it kind of feels more more at home. Cool, cool. And then beyond Disney, we got to say the Main Street Electrical Parade certainly influenced some things beyond Disney. And I just want to touch on this glow in the park thing that was part of Six Flags that you had something to do with. Maybe a small I did, role. Yeah. What's what's was this? 
Yeah, because of me working in the electrical parade and being a designer and trying to get into the industry, I had friends that worked in the industry and they knew I was, you know, I used to drive floats and I was drawing some cool things. They said, hey, do you want to, do you want to like help us create this parade? We're talking, it was, this is with Legacy Entertainment and they were, they were dealing directly with Six Flags and they they were telling me that Six Flags wants to do something like the electrical parade. They don't want to say that. They can't, right? But they wanted to have a nighttime light parade. And we thought you would have a, you would take a cool stab at it. So I, I definitely, I'm like, yeah, I'm all over it. And they gave me a really, like a very short and sweet outline of like, okay, well, it's Warner Brothers, right? Six Flags. So we're going to have a, a Looney Tunes unit. We're going to have a Scooby-Doo unit. We're going to have a DC Comics unit. Um, and, you know, kind of like that kind of write up. What, what, what would you do for that? So I kind of, you know, sketch up some things and they said, it's cool. We love it. Let's see the color versions of it. So then I would design some floats and I would, I would draw these things as if it would make sense to build, right? Because having driven floats, I would know that, okay, the driver is going to be right here. I did the same thing when I designed mascot characters because I used to pick up extra shifts doing characters at Disneyland. So if I'm designing a mascot costume, I know where the vision is going to be. I want to make sure it's lightweight and can move really good too. So it's realistic type of drawings. It's still cool looking, but it's, it, it makes sense. So when, the, when you give it to the vendor, it makes sense. So, yeah, I, I designed it, and then they took my artwork to Six Flags to the CEO, and he, he loved it, and he greenlit it. And that parade ended up in, I think, six of di- six different Six Flags parks in North America. So a bunch in this country and one in Mexico City had it. Here's the funny part. Once it got approved, Legacy Entertainment went to Raul Rodriguez, who was like a famous float designer. He actually designed a lot of the Rose Parade floats. And he's also uh, a designer who did Disneyland's 50th Parade, as well as the California Adventure Eureka Parade. So this super awesome float designer, one of the best of the best, he took, he looked at my artwork and he drew like these ridiculously fantastical versions of what I drew. And they were kind of using that in a lot of the marketing and when they gave that artwork to the vendor, the vendor said, you can't afford this artwork. Like, what is this? This doesn't even have wheels. Is this thing floating? Like, these drawings don't make sense. They're not like, do you have anything else? And then they gave them my art. So, like, yeah, for the marketing, for the press and stuff, they were showing, like, these beautiful works of art. But they just, there's no logic behind them. And then so, like, most of the floats were designed after the original drawings that I did, too. But... But in all like the marketing stuff, floats by Raul Rodriguez. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. So that was like a fun little intro to the industry. That's funny. Did you get to see it live ever? So they flew me out to a couple of different cities to help out the Six Flags over Texas. I went out there and helped them. I was there for a few weeks. And then um, they flew me to St. Louis too. So we were, we were opening over there too. And it was, it was so awesome because it was such a Disney crew that put it together. Like the producer, the choreographers, we all work together at the parade department at Disneyland. And now here we are in the Midwest and we're in Texas trying to do the same thing. But we're like trying to like pass the torch where there's a bunch of high school kids who are just, you know, random summer job. They got cast in this new light parade for Six Flags. We were kind of telling them like, this is how we do it at Disneyland. And they were all about it. They were super stoked. And um, there's a few of them I still see on Facebook, actually. Like, and that was a long time ago, right? That was probably 2008. But yeah, it's a really good time, really fun, fun experience. Very, very cool. Well, that was a lot of talk about not only the Main Street Electrical Parade and its 50th anniversary, but a lot of stuff it inspired, how it all started. That was a fun convo. Thank you, Sam. But are you ready for some trivia? Bring it on. Do you know the answer? Get your brain gears churning and play along. It's trivia time. All right, Sam, before we get to trivia, I want to remind folks that if they love scented candles as much as I do and they love theme parks, they'll want to check out Souvenir Scents, where they're creating handmade candles and melts to help bring your most cherished vacation memories into your home. Their unique scents are individually formulated by their own in-house scent creator to bring the most realistic representations to life. So if you love the scents of Soarin, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Haunted Mansion, Flight of Passage, and so much more, 
Be sure to check out Souvenir Sense by clicking the link in this episode's description. And good news, DCTC listeners save 15% off of their order simply by using discount code DCTC when checking out. So click on the link and use code DCTC. Now, Sam, do you want to hit me with a trivia question first, or shall I hit you? Hit me. All righty. On June 14th, 1997... A presentation of the Electrical Parade called the Hercules Electrical Parade ran on Broadway in Manhattan, New York, for the opening of Disney's New Amsterdam Theater and the film Hercules. Now, Disney arranged for the lights to be all turned off on about eight blocks of Broadway up to the theater. All businesses complied, except for one. What business would not comply? The Warner Brothers store. I didn't have enough seniority to go to that New York trip. And I had to, like, hold the fort because I was opening Light Magic. But I remember hearing that story from them. Yeah, Disney rival Warner Brothers would not shut the lights off on their store, which is honestly really super petty. Like, it's very petty, but you know what? There's no, I was going to say there's no more Warner, Bro- Warner Brothers stores, but there's no more Disney stores either. So <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> They're both dead. Awesome. Well, you got it. Good job. What is your trivia question for me? So we talked a little bit about Main Street Electrical Pride opening in 1972, and then it went away for America on Parade, and it came back. Which America on Parade floats got repurposed into Electrical Parade that are still being used today? Oh, gosh. Were any of the insects? The the, the whirly bugs? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um... Oh, well, uh, how about the big finale, the uh, the America on Parade, which or the not the America finale, which is now this new small world finale? I don't that it maybe I'm not for sure about that. I was going to say, the I don't know. I'm finale, just guessing. That was a good guess. The fi- <laughs> everything is repurposed. The finale float in America on Parade was these series of hot air balloons with characters on on the base of it, right? Those got repurposed to be the three mushrooms in Electrical Parade that are still being used. Really? So if you look at pictures of American Parade, you'll see that it's exact same shape. It almost looks like the same exact caster wheel right there. Um, and even when the driver sits, you're like, oh, that's, that's the same damn float right there. And there's another, there's two other floats that are still being reused as well. And I'm not sure if it's the stagecoach or the, the covered wagon. But one of those is the uh, Cinderella coach was repurposed. Wow. And you could tell because the driver sits on the front, like Cinderella coach, right? That's mm-hmm. actually the float driver driving the float. They're, whole, they're steering by these ropes. They kind of come down to like where the wheel is and they pull it. That's how they turn it. And that's how the <laughs> covered wagon. That sounds dangerous. <laughs> or the stagecoach was. I know. It's, well, especially when it gets stuck in the trolley tracks. That's hilarious. But how crazy is that? They're still being used. Doesn't surprise it's, me at months. all. Not in the least. (laughs) Well, Sam, this was a lot of fun. Before we go, is there anything you want to plug? Sure. You can find me on Twitter. I'm on there way too much. I'm at CarTarSauce. Or if you want to check out any of my gallery art, I'm. you can look me up at SamCarterArt.com. Excellent. Well, Sam, thank you so much. This was a fun convo, and I love how much you love the Main Street Electrical Parade and how you let me talk crap about it for a little bit. And and yeah, you you Listen, you know I appreciate it. You know know, deep down I I appreciate it. So... Uh, I like honesty and you know I just like people that allow me to talk about it cuz my my family doesn't want to hear it anymore so I'm just glad you exist so I could talk about it <laughs> Excellent. Well, have a good one. I'll talk to you again next time. Thanks man. See you later. Thanks for tuning into this episode. Don't miss any future episodes by subscribing and following Disney with a Z Coast to Coast on your favorite podcast app. This episode has been executive produced by Robert Scontrino. Gain rewards like Robert, including access to never-before-heard episodes and livestream Q&As, by visiting the Patreon link in this episode's description. And don't forget that I'll be matching 100% of your first month subscription to The Trevor Project for all new patrons joining this month, June of 2022. Basically, anything you need can be found in this episode's description. From additional information and links discussed in this episode found in the show notes, to the DCTC hotline where you can leave a voicemail and be heard on a future episode, access to the show's official website, some free gifts from me to you, and so much more. So be sure to check out this episode's description. Other than that, folks, have a magical day. Bye! Thanks for listening to Disney Coast to Coast! Have a magical day! (laughs) 
Disney Coast to Coast is produced and hosted by Jeff DePauly. Learn more about the podcast and become a supporter at DisneyCoastToCoast.com. This podcast is part of the DePodcast Network. Learn more about this show, plus find more quality and entertaining podcasts at DePodcastNetwork.com. That's D-E-Podcastnetwork.com.